this Mexican Mafia timeline that you're going to see in the subtitles. Um, I've seen this in the past. There's a few discrepancies and errors, man. So I'm just acknowledging it, man. I'll do the best while I'm doing my breakdown of each segment um, to do the best to correct it. But even my information may have some discrepancies as well. So bear with me. And if I have to do some additional input at the end of this uh, spill, I'm going to do so. Hope everyone's having a positive, productive day. And let's get straight to it, man. As we already know. Well, Mexican Mafia formed in 1957 in Dual Vocational Institute. It consisted of a core of at least 13 members. Luis Huetelba Flores. Man, a lot of these names aren't accurate. Ben Topo Peters. Michael Porcelain Morin. Abraham A.B. Hernandez. Jesse Chino Gordon. Manuel Rocky Luna. Dorotero Sleepy Benincourt. Jose Mongo Silva and Frank Moose Bazor. Neither Joe Morgan or Cheyenne were the first original members. In 1958 of March, the LAPD holds a press conference to look at the escalation in violent crimes committed by LA Hispanic gang members in connection with La M behind the walls. So San Francisco gang member Mike Killer Hatchet Eisen is committed to the California Youth Authority after he and his brother attack a barber with a baseball bat. Eisen quickly becomes a rising MA member from up north and is actually like a shot caller and leader within that organization as his growth continues within the system. Los Angeles Sheriff's Deputy, in May 13, 1958, Ned Lovritovich is stabbed in court after offering testimony in the murder robbery trial of Gregory Valenzuela and Augustin Acosta, two La Emma connected gang members from East Los Angeles. June of 1958, MA members Sleepy Bed in Court and Frank Musbazer murder a prison guard at San Quentin, making it the first of many attacks La Emma launches against correctional staff for years to come and decades to come. December 23, 1959, 16-year-old Rudy Cheyenne Cadena begins serving a prison sentence for second-degree murder at Chino Institute for Men. His legacy will only continue to grow as he becomes an impactful MA member as well. 1960, LAPD, California Department of Corrections, circulated a memo related to the fact that La MA had begun rapidly spreading throughout the state's prison system. Rudy Shine Cadena is transferred to San Quentin and kills a black inmate on the first day there. There's a story that a big six foot five, three hundred pound black man tried to plant a kiss on his cheek and said, "You're my my bitch." He came back later that day and killed him. Killer Hatchet Eisen enters the California prison system after conviction for assault with a deadly weapon. Joe Pay Lake Morgan leads eleven inmates in a jailbreak from L.A. County Jail. He had been called as a witness in a trial involving the murder of another inmate. This escape seemed like it was planned. July 14, 1963, La Emma Narcotics Chief Harry Gamboa Buckley, a.k.a. Hollywood Harry, 43 of Monterey Park, is arrested and charged with heading a drug ring which sold $40,000 worth of pure heroin. Buckley, man, was a very impactful player in the game. 1964, Mexican Mafia begins induction ceremony, blood oath on Rudy Shan Cadenas orders. This is the first time I've ever heard that. 1965, the first seeds of Nuestra Familia are planted in state prison Soledad. Nuestra Familia was Northern California's answer to La Emma and reacts to La Emma's extortion efforts of Northern California Hispanics in the prison system. There's errors in that one. 1967, California Department of Corrections reports some Mexican Mafia controls yards at San Quentin and has chapters in Soledad and Folsom State Prison. November 7, 1967, San Quentin inmate Forrest Smith, a convicted burglar from Los Angeles, is killed in prison Hospital by convicted La MA hitman Leo Psycho Estrada Robles. September 15, 1968, Hector Maddog Padilla, a gang member from Northern California, is attacked after a confrontation with La MA over a pair of shoes or boots. Associate Carlos Pai Ortega had given him. This is the third in series of La MA attacks on North Daniel Associates within the Nuestra Familia. Philip Neri and Sonny Pena were killed earlier and part of the so called shoe war between La MA. September 16, 1968, Nuestra Familia launches an attack on the Mexican Mafia. The final tally left 11 wounded and one La Emma member dead. Archie the Anvil Gallegos, also known as Cricket. 1969, Cheyenne Cadena begins corresponding with members of the Latino group La Brown Berets. 1970, a Mexican Mafia and Black Rula family agree to a truce. 
So this actually did occur in 1970, around that time frame. A lot of it had to do with Cheyenne's relationship with uh, George Jackson. A prison gang unit investigator, Joe Moody, finds the body of one of his female informants murdered in Monterey Park. Pinned to her body was a note consisting of two words, Le Emme. So they basically set an example right there. Rudy Shine Cadena of Bakersfield later claimed East LA Primera Flats issues orders to recently pro La Emme members to take over federally funded drug programs operating in LA. The first target is National Institute of Men's Health Special Programs for Alcohol Abuse, which was headquartered in Pomona. Paroled MA member Edward Ed Easy Ed Aguirre is named executive, executive director of League of Union United Citizens to help addicts. Cadena and Black Gorilla family founder George L. Jackson are targeted for their influence over large groups of prisoners. Cadena public calls for a reuniting of Latino inmates within the system. He wanted to unite the MA and Nuestra Familia, creating a statewide criminal syndicate. George Jackson is murdered during a hostage situation at San Quentin Prison, leaving Cadena the state's most outspoken prison reformist from behind the walls. When George Jackson was killed in August, this is why a lot of the black inmates consider this to be Black August, and we always pray tribute and homage to this date. December 1971, the first street hit called in from behind bars by the MA is carried out by Ramon Mundo Mendoza and Eduardo Sailor Boy Gonzalez on the orders of Peg Leg Morgan. Rudy Cheyenne Cadena is paroled to Los Angeles. Killer Hatchet Eisen is convicted of second degree murder for stabbing a fellow inmate 51 times in the prison chapel at Folsom. Yeah, he did a gruesome hit on this dude. January 21st, 1972, La M.A. rival Carlos N. Rodriguez is killed by a shotgun blast to the fat face fired from point blank rage in Pomona. February 15th, 1972, George Poyle Felix is stabbed more than 30 times by M.A. members. February 17th, 1972, Ellen Delia is shot three times in the head and dumped on the way to Sacramento, where she was scheduled to discuss La M.A.'s infiltration of a state-funded program. March 16, 1972, the M.A. dropout Raymond Chirio Ochoa, 29, shot, is found bound and tied to a chair in his commerce apartment. He had been shot to death a few feet from his wife and teenage son. Treacherous, right? Treacherous. April 3, 1972, opening remarks are given in the murder trial of Mexican Mafia member Gilbert Shotgun Sanchez of Commerce. Sanchez was accused of killing the M.A. dropout Chirio Ochoa. Ochoa was shot in his living room near his 13-year-old son who lay bound nearby. Oh, wow. April 21st, 1972, Aaron Brotherhood members Fred Madrin and Donald Hell murder Nuestra Familia member Fred Charles Castillo in Palm Hall at Chino Institute for Men. The hit is allegedly ordered by Mexican Mafia leader Joe Morgan. The murder reportedly seals a pact between the Aaron Brotherhood and Mexican Mafia. October 13th, 1972, Gilbert Shotgun Sanchez is acquitted of murdering Chirio Ochoa. Man, now, Sanchez was already serving a combined 150-year sentence for 15 counts of armed robbery. Nuestra Familia member Leonard Arias brutally executed in California State Prison in Tehachapi by La Eme. Rudy Stein Cadena is returned to Chino State uh, Institute for Men as a provider while later, October 31, 1972. December 18, 1972. Rudy Cheyenne Cadena is stabbed 70 times in Palm Hall at Chino Institute for Men by members of La Nuestra Familia. Gilbert Sandoval and Steven Oropeza are injured in the attack as well. They don't talk about the two brothers that got hit a couple days before that. Though. That's kind of interesting. 1973, a 36-inmate murders occurred in Behind the Walls in 1972, of which are attributed to the Mexican Mafia, 30 of them. I think that there was a little bit more by the A.B., I think you take away some from the MA, from my understanding. Now, Lucha director Eduardo Easy Ed Aguirre flees to Mexico with $146,000 of the group's funds after federal audit finds $300,000 in federal funds missing from the group's coffers, causing the collapse of the program. Community Concern in LA based community self help organization receives $1 million in federal funds. MA Lieutenant Rafael Sparky Sandoval. A man with ties to the Italian organized crime in Southern California, and Emmy's biggest shot car behind the walls, is the director. Sandoval also expands Emmy's political ties, donating several hundred thousand to another politician. November 11th, Pat Duran, a convicted car thief in San Bernardino, is stabbed in the exercise yard used by inmates held under protective custody at San Quentin. 
Duran expressed concerns for safety after a run-in with a LAMA member. November 22, 1973, two San Quentin inmates are stabbed in separate incidents. Robert Tavaluin from Los Angeles is stabbed in San Quentin's main yard, and then Thomas Gregory, 34, an inmate from San Francisco, died of stab wounds he received in the chow hall. Now, sometime in June of 1975, Joe Pele Morgan secures a contract with Italian organized crime figures, LA's Dragna Mob, which provides Emmy with a half dozen kilos of pure Mexican heroin in exchange for muscle work in Hispanic and non Hispanic neighborhoods. The operation, which runs from Juarez to TJ, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and Sacramento, nets them $60,000 a month profit. From no July 1975 through November 1977, LAMA enforcers Mundo, Mendoza, and Eddie Sellerboy Gonzalez had consolidated efforts throughout the California prison system. October 1975, the Mexican Mafia carries out triple homicides of three Nuestra Familia members in the California State Prison. I'm wondering who. Now, Italian Mike Delia, a pro LAMA member, sets up a project get going. The state aim of the program is to assist convicts readjust to the living society. Delia's program is launched by $228,000 worth of government aid. February 1976, Pele Morgan is released on parole. He quickly flees to Utah. January 1977, Robert Lewis, a special assistant to Senator Alex Garcia, is gunned down by the MA members. Lewis was linked to Michael Italian Mike Delia's project. Ooh, wait, they were doing big things. January 16, 1977, Frito Trujillo, a resident of Project Get Going's halfway house, is murdered by La Los Angeles member, MA members Eddie Celeboy Gonzalez and Michael Italian Mike Delia. In February of 1977, La MA member Gilbert Abal Robo is shot to death in his Fresno home by Alfie Sosa, Choco, and Manny Mo Torres after announcing, announcing his plans to defect from the gang. The hit was ordered by La MA OG. Robot Salas. And Robot be involved in a lot of stuff in this, man. February 11th, 1977. MA associate Bruno Chavez is stabbed to death in Glassell Park by Lame hitters Alfie Sosa and Weddle Shy. February 15th, 1977. MA member George Foyo Felix is killed in his Rosemead home by MA hitman Choco Mantellano. So there's a lot of hits going on at that time, man. Um, different time era. Um, they were putting a lot of work in. You know, some, one of the main enforcers were, uh, as you see, Alfie Sosa and Mundo Mendoza. So here we go. February 20th, 1977. MA boss Robert Robot Salas and enforcers Alfred Alfie Red Sosa and Armando Monday Mandy Varela are arrested in Monterey Park and charged with possession of a concealed weapon. Sosa and Salas are released on bail, but Varela remains in custody and begins cooperating in the investigation of the murder of Ellen Delia. His cooperation results in the rearrest and filing of murder charges against Salas for the murders of 8-Ball Robal, Ellen Delia. Alfie Sosa cooperated as well and provided information in nine La Anime murders he participated in. April 23, 1977, M.A. hitman Eddie Boy Gonzalez is indicted for drug and weapon possessions. July 1977, Joe Pegley Morgan is captured in Utah and charged with trafficking firearms and added to it is narcotics and fugitive warrants he was facing. In April of 1977, M.A. heavy hitters Alfred Alfie Red Sosa, Michael Italian Mike Delia, Aztec Valles, Choco Matallano, and Weddle Shy were all indicted by a Los Angeles grand jury for the murders of Robert Lewis and Isidro Frito Trujillo. Sosa and Shyrock were also indicted in the murder of Jaime Bruno Chavez in Glassell Park. Valles and Montellano were charged in the deaths of La MA members Gilbert Eightball Robal in Fresno and George Boyle Felix in Rosemead. So all these MA members were just hit with numerous charges, man, because a lot at that time, I think both Alfie and Mundo were flipping at this time. August 26, La MA member Peter the People Savez from F Troop is shot and killed by tower guards after ignoring a warning shot while stabbing fellow inmate and BGF member James Williams. The incident is linked to a string of racial attacks. Savez was aided in the attack by Ronald Hendricks, an AB inmate. October 1977, MA member Peter. The Furry Ojeda, also Sana, is given authority over all of Orange County. He became a very impactful leader. 
Joe Pele Morgan is sentenced to five years in May 15th of 1978 in state prison for being a felon in possession of firearm and transporting a rifle across state lines. A mere two hours later in federal court, he is sentenced to serve two to ten years in federal prison for possession of heroin. His conviction was based on the testimony of turncoat MA enforcer Mundo Mendoza. He went on to be convicted of second degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison. So Mundo at this time flipped against uh, Pele Morgan and a few other uh, MA leaderships. October 78th, MA hitman Daniel Choco Montellano released from jail after posting $100,000 in Los Angeles murder cases and another $150,000 in Fresno cases. So the MA had a lot of money at that time. They were doing big things. November 11th, 1978, NF member T-Bone is stabbed to death in the rec yard inside the Federal Correctional Institute at Lone Park. An autopsy reveals he suffered 45 stab wounds. MA member Adolfo Champ Reynoso is convicted of ordering Trejo's murder and sentenced to 95, 99 years in federal prison. November 13, 1978, investigation launched into the relationship between Municipal County Judge Lenore Schreiber in Fresno and La M.A. shot cars Choco Montellano and Robot Salas after it is learned she has put money on the books and visited both men in Fresno County Jail. Wow, she also lent him the car. 1978 of May 30th, La M.A. shot car Daniel Choco Montellano is charged with the murder of teenage gang member Elgato Granillo outside of Montellano's Visalia Park. First and foremost, I found a couple er erroneous mistakes. First and foremost, Joe Pegley Morgan. Um, I don't think he was recruited into the MA until 1968, possibly. Um, and he was uh, never one of the first members. Neither was Cheyenne. I think Cheyenne came in maybe around 59 or 61, around the, those time eras, man. 1961 is when they started to have the blood oath within the organization as far as the MA. And this is when a lot of members decided to be given the opportunity to leave or stay in. I never heard it was 64. Um, you know, a couple other discrepancies, too, is that everybody gets wrong, and that is the date of the uh, shoe incident. It was September 14th, 1968, when Mad Dog Padilla was actually uh, hit. And the incident, the shoe war, which we've always been taught, it was September 16th, 1968. It was actually September 15th, 1968. Um, a lot of the other information I cannot um, really confirm or corroborate, but I've been told by numerous individuals that... Uh, you know, even though Joe Pele Morgan was a very impactful and influential MA member, he wasn't necessarily the most powerful or strongest MA member there was. You know, he was up there, though. But you had people like Champ Reynoso. You had people like, uh, you know what I'm saying, who was the other individual? You know, Roball. You know what I'm saying? All these individuals had just as much Im impact within the organization. You know, they've been doing this for a long time. And so uh, a lot of times people have the tendency because one person runs with the term godfather other people start to follow that same lead when in fact each ma member has just as much you know everyone has a vote um you know there's a lot of discrepancies about what was going on you heard about buckley um buckley what joe morgan actually tried to have him hit you know while he was out over there in uh mexico because you know buckley had a lot of connects over there to the, what you would call families Back then, you didn't call them cartels. You called them basically families, and this was the ones that were running the drugs across the border. And I think a lot of it was because Buckley knew a lot of information on Joe Morgan. You know, uh, Buckley wasn't really a uh, wasn't an enemy member, like it says in the in the you know timeline. But he was a very influential MA associate. He did do time in Folsom. He had earned his bones as well, man. So he wasn't no weak link. Um, what other discrepancies as well, man, would be a uh, you know, a couple of the 1975, three NF members were murdered. I don't know which three of those were murdered. I never even heard that. Um, we know Woodsy was, was killed out there in the streets around, what, 76 or 77. Um, but as far as in the, the prison system, 75, I thought everybody was separated. <laughs> Other than that, you know, there's probably a few erroneous errors that I didn't catch when I was reading it or just information that I did not know. Um, they didn't talk about the first ever informant, which was, I believe it was Apache. Um, that was the first ever MA turncoat coat informant. They didn't talk about the brothers that got hit in Chino right before Shine got hit. Um, you know, there's a, a lot of things kind of catered towards always being directed by Joe Morgan when some of these issues that, not off the top of my head, but some of these issues were not just influenced by Joe Morgan. They were actually called by other MA members as well. Um, you know, the, the he did, Joe Morgan was able to bring some 
things as far as the connections and ties with the, with the Italians as well, man. Uh, you know, but, you know, there's a lot of different things like you're going to learn throughout the history that may be a little bit different. I've, I've always heard that one of the most impactful MMA members probably would have been Champ is what I've always been told. You know, but uh, at the same time, you know, you can't take away the effort that he's put in. Um, you know, Mundo and all them put in a lot of work. I don't know how many work does he has. Uh, somewhere like five to nine. But they were the main enforcers at that time out there. And, uh, you know, they had their hands in a lot of the, you know, the grant funding for programs and stuff, which was smart. Cheyenne had a good vision. He was light head years of, uh, ahead. You know what I mean? And he was tapping into things that he thought would be beneficial overall for his organization, his people. And that's why he wanted to unite Rasa. You know what I'm saying? He did have that go on mind. Um, just unfortunately, there was other people who had a different agenda as opposed to him. Anyways, man, this is just a quick little spill, little timeline, man. I'm going to be also doing some videos. I have some court cases uh, and paperwork of, of certain events and some unsealed documents regarding NFMA and other groups that are going to be very interesting, man. Uh, very, very interesting. So I'll get to that later. Have a good one.